Welcome to Unstoppable You. I am Unstoppable Tracy, and my unstoppable guest today is Kevin Bulmer. Kevin Bulmer is unstoppable because he is known as the No Schedule Man. <laughs> he is showing up in my life all over. Secretly, he pretends like I'm stalking him, but I think he's secretly stalking me. <laughs> he showed up at a Motivation Monday where I was presenting once, and then I was presenting right across Canada with open doors for accessibility, and he keeps showing up as the MC. I don't know. And then we have this workshop that's talked about, what, what's the name of the workshop that we're going to? Tomorrow, it's, uh, <laughs> it's like great, great strategy it's, leads, you know? It's a really fun topic. Uh, topics that sell, I think, for, for speaking, that there's that. Yeah, and we're both attending it. that tomorrow. And so we just keep, we're meant to be here. So I finally threw him a lifeline and said, you don't have to stalk me anymore. You can come on my show. Yeah, I was actually, I was sleeping in the alley out back last night. <laughs> and so when you got here this morning, remember I was just sort of scraping at the door? <laughs> I, the thing that started it was when you were a guest on my podcast, wasn't oh, it? Oh, that's right. Oops, I forgot that part. Episode I guess I... 62 of Journeys with the No Schedule Man. It's called How to Be Unstoppable. Aww. Although we might share a few more hints and tips here over the next 20 minutes, but there are some good ones there. Oh, yeah. Journeys, with Tracy. No yeah. Schedule Man. That was our first actual conversation, I think. I forgot that. We hadn't even met face to face. And I think it was just like this. We were bantering right from day one. Yeah, because we were just on the doorstep of doing one of the opening doors for accessibility. I think it might have been Ottawa. Yes. And so I was asked to be there both as a host, as you mentioned, and to do my Rise Like a Phoenix, Race Like a Turtle speech. And so I was trying to help the March of Dimes with some extra promotion. And so, of course, Mary Lynn from March of Dimes, whenever something like that comes up, she says, we'll call Tracy Schmidt. Uh. <laughs> right? So, and we'd been trying to connect, I think, a few months prior, and it just wasn't working. No. This is all coming back to me now. I haven't thought about this for months. <laughs> uh, and I had reached out to you, and I thought, if we're going to get this conversation recorded and released a week or so prior to the Ottawa Opening Doors for Accessibility event, yes. we've got to do this sometime in the next week. And I think you sent me a note back that said basically, How about now? Sunday morning. Oh. <laughs> I've got, I'm on an airplane, but I have Sunday morning. Do you remember this? Sunday yes. morning from 10 to 11.30. I'm just going to trust that you're going to be there and I'll be on Skype then. <laughs> um, and we were. And that's how it started. And the results of that, episode 62 of Journeys with the No Schedule Man. There, there's your start. And I've been stalking you ever since. Oh, likewise. Sure. Right. Likewise, Journeys with the No Schedule Man. His episodes are all incredible. I'm excited about Thanks. 62 together, but there is so many amazing interviews. But you got this really neat story about how you began uh, and even just the line, Journeys with No Schedule Man, and being who you are. Yeah, well, all of it's just a journey, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, a big part of what I do is to try to help people see themselves and their own experience and what they have immediately around them from a slightly different perspective so that they can embrace and celebrate what we do have rather than spending so much energy on what we don't. Yes. And there's, I think, a big difference between learning and growing and evolving and challenging yourself to move forward to the things that you, you want to experience and, and grow into versus self-judgment, you know, looking at ourselves, whether that's related to the world of you know, physical disability or not, that's something that I think everybody goes through. Yes. Um, and the more I think we, we find that we're really able to embrace who we really are and celebrate what we do have, we realize we, we've got more than enough to offer, both to be content with ourselves um, and to really celebrate and support each other. And that's one of the things I've loved, Tracy, about being involved with March of Dimes so much, is I see so much of that spirit. Yes. I've met so many people who, if you'll forgive the, seems like kind of a lazy stereotype, but have lots of reason why you could complain. Yep, yep. That maybe they do when, when I'm not around, but I see so much determination, resourcefulness, hopeful spirit, support, celebration of each other. Um, 
And that's the kind of energy I want to be around. That's the way of the no schedule man. <laughs> no schedule yeah. man. Yeah. And it really is in abundance in that community, the March of Dimes community. Yeah. But he's being really humble, folks, super humble. You yourself have had an incredible journey. <laughs> You've come from this high performance world. He himself was in radio and television. And you even had a life before that life of working at GM in the NASCAR world. And that's kind of like a high performance, uh, really top, top notch, really high quality, perfection's important because you're trying to have exponential results. And, and you're now part of this community that's called the Turtle Tribe. <laughs> and, and so yeah. it's just a really big journey from the, the image conscious world into a world of being conscious about the community and the mind. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what got you from that world to this world? Yeah, well, it's um, like so many others, not unlike yourself. Mm. You do the things that you think that, for whatever reason, one or another, you think that you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And you work really hard at it. And, yeah. and in a lot of cases, have a lot of success, like what you had with Shoppers Drug Mart and with Air Canada and some other stops along the way. You mentioned about how I was general manager of, an, of the first ever NASCAR sanctioned racetrack here in Canada. Holy cow. How, that, how I went from being a radio announcer to doing that is too long of a story to really get into. Okay. <laughs> but you go through different chapters in your life and you take on the next challenge and you get a little bit more of a uh, what feels like a more important title on your business card and your income goes up and you get married and you have kids and you got a house and you get two cars and you think I'm doing this perfect. Yes. This is everything I'm supposed to be doing. Isn't life grand? Everybody's right. looking at me from the outside and thinking well he's got it made but on the inside you're feeling like happiness, fulfillment, contentment is always around the next corner. It's, it's a result yeah. as opposed to a choice. There is always this sort of disquiet of, well, may, maybe it'll come after we do the next thing. And, and I'm finding, Tracy, that so many people experience some version of that. Yeah. Whether it, it, it's something major like an infrastructure rattling change, like an accident that leaves you with a disability, or you lose a loved one, or like what was in my case, the... Um, the, the marriage dissolving and going through divorce and business failure and some health concerns at the same time, these are things that happen to people. It's yeah. just part of life. Yeah. And they're, they're really opportunities to stop and, like I said before, maybe take a, a different perspective, take a different look. This is why I like resourcefulness. That means to me, just take another look and try to see things from a different perspective. Or continue to be like the fly against the window and just keep bashing your head against yeah. the, the glass because it's clear. You can see, well, this is the way out, right? Yes. And we know where that gets the fly. It's the, that old definition of insanity, of doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And yet, so many of us continue to do that because we think there must be a way, a, a script, a map that we can live yeah. that will deliver fulfillment. But the, the way... Uh, at least I've found. You tell me if you agree uh, or not. Yes. We, we reach for all these things that are out here, hoping that it'll fill us up. Yes. But the way to really express ourselves in here is to go from the inside out. And that's where all the, the turtle stuff came. And the, the speech that put us together that, that I do is called, as you know, rise like a phoenix, race like a turtle. And the idea of that is that the phoenix finds its wings by going through its own ashes. Yes which you have to let go if you're going to find and embrace that new opportunity and, and renewal. And then the turtle, this is not a new idea. Like, go look up the tortoise and the hare, that old fable. And yet we're all still trying to figure out how to be the first hare. Yes. To have the engine pegged. Here's the racing thing again, right? Yeah. At maximum RPM without ever having the engine blow. And that doesn't work. We know it doesn't work, and yeah. we all still try to do it. You're still running at a million miles an hour, and yes. I'm still doing it. Yes. So just, you know... <laughs> I mean, it's, it's hard. Yes. Um, but so what I love about you, we are running a million miles an hour, and he is, both of us are 24-7 and barely find ourselves in our own homes. We're probably in motel rooms around the world more often than we are in our own homes. However, what I love about you is that even coming here today is you build into the here and now. You are so fully present. 
And so it isn't about waiting for tomorrow to give you satisfaction. You got satisfaction on your journey coming here because it's really nice outside. And so you decided to do a podcast and, and to do some footage on the way home to take advantage of your new surroundings because you're in a different city. You came here today from London, which was amazing of you to commute all that way in your busy schedule. And you're making the most of it. And it's the way you live. Like you, you, you walk what you talk. You do what you say. I try to, but I'm no different than anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I look like I'm present when I'm in front of people that I'm trying to make a good impression for. Yes. But I have the, the conversations with myself and the frustrations and the times in between, the same as all of us do. And I guess that's the point, Trace, is that all of us do. Yes. And I, I feel like just a little bit of empathy goes such a long way. I was just talking with your producer, Jay, before we started here. And yeah. And we were sharing about each other's histories a little bit, and, and I was mentioning that even despite the fact that you and I have become such good friends, and I think about our, our mutual pal Mike Mulligan from Moving Forward Rehabilitation and Wellness Center, who is also a, a subject of, of the podcast in the second episode I ever did. And he was paralyzed from the, the waist down, and he's still determined he's going to walk again. And um, Despite having met so many incredible people that face accessibility challenges, it wasn't until my own mother went through knee replacement surgery mm. and I realized, holy cow, like even the, and I'm not trying to point fingers or blame or anything, but the physiotherapy place yes. whose job it is in part to help people like that mm -hmm. rehab and get better, you couldn't get your in and out of. Mm. It's astounding. But when you're not walking in those shoes, you don't see it. No. Right? And, and, and I would say even then, you have a greater empathy because it's your mom and living with your mom. But until it happens to you, it's just you're one step closer to understanding your mom and, and the world of something different. Well, it immediately related to me so much of what I had learned at the accessibility conferences and what mm -hmm. people like Jeffrey Kerr, who you've talked to before, have, have shared. You, I mean, you hear it. You see it. You understand it. Yeah. But it's it's... It's not the same as actually living inside that experience. No. And I feel like whether we're dealing with an immediate challenge, like some sort of a physical limitation or, or, or not, um, sometimes we just, you know, we're all guilty of assuming. Yes. And getting wrapped up in our own experience without just pausing for a moment and considering what that other person is, is having to go through and also understanding that, you know, like the whole Phoenix thing, everybody has something that they're dealing with. Oh, yes. You know, we think we know, but we really don't know. No. And it's, it's amazing to me, Tracy, how when we just share openly, like you did on my podcast, like you've asked me to do here, when we share the things that society tells us is, you know, vulnerable. Yeah. Or you're so transparent. I, that's fine, I guess. But what we're really doing is we're just being real with each other. Yes. And the irony is that when you share those things that almost make you feel a little bit more uncomfortable, like you're going to be judged and excluded. Yes. Actually, in my experience, it, it has the opposite effect. It draws people closer to you because it humanizes you. Well, and look at your turtle tribe. It's blown up. Your turtle tribe. <laughs> we're getting there. Yeah, it's incredible the amount of people that it's attracting as a result of just being the authentic you and the vulnerable welcome space for folks. Yeah, just the whole idea of slow down to go faster. Yes, slow down to go faster. You know, just even here's the race car analogy. If you think about a, like a NASCAR style race car going in a, on an oval track, okay. what happens on most of those tracks if you leave the throttle mashed the whole time? Yeah. The car won't turn. Oh. It's just going to go, st <laughs> you're going to hit, now there are some massive tracks like Daytona and Talladega, not to take too much of a NASCAR left turn on you here, but <laughs> a, a, a half mile, even a mile, a mile and a half track. When, after you're gone down the straightaway, you have to let off the gas. Okay. If you try to go too fast, the car can't turn and it'll push up and you'll crash. Life oh. is the same way. It's a rhythm. You know, even every day it's a rhythm. You're sort of on the gas, you pick up speed, and then you got to let off and sort of, and you just, it's, it's slow down to go faster. That's what they would say in the racing terms of overdriving the corner. And we do that to ourselves. We, 
work a little too hard. We maybe stay out a little late. I was just up even the, revealing the time that we're recording this, but the Toronto Maple Leafs, at least the time that we're doing this, yeah. we're still in the playoffs. <laughs> and I'm up a little later than I normally am because I wanted to see how one of the games ended. Well, I felt that the next morning. Yes. Overdrove the corner. Overdrove the corner. <laughs> so, you know, and that's okay. We're all going to do that. But just yeah. pick your spots and know how that's going to affect you. But just let's take our time. They, they say that life is short. And it is. It's short enough that I don't think we want to be carrying with us the things that don't serve us any longer than we have to. Yeah. Let them go. That takes a lot of character to do that. Oh, yeah. But I think life's also long. Hence the turtle tribe. It's long enough to heal, it's long enough to grow, and it's long enough to take your time for things to unwind and for the path to sort of show itself to you, which is why the, the group of personal development that we've developed online is the turtle tribe. They love you in there. Oh, just, yeah, everybody I love them too. <laughs> I brought you a turtle. Well, you actually, brought I brought three turtle. turtles. Yeah. How's this for like the worst prop in TV history? It's like three millimeters high. <laughs> so there's no way the camera can see it, but it's a little turtle charm. I carry oh, one of these in my pocket every it's day. It's ceramic too. It's not plastic. It's a beautiful yeah. piece of art. So you, you could go with a, a, there's a green turtle, a sort of a bluish purple and a yellow, and I'll put them there and you can choose whichever oh. one you like or all three, but... Thank um, that, you. Yeah, and it's a charm. We can put it on my necklace. Yeah, they are charms, actually. You could do that if you wanted. I'm a guy. I'm lazy. Oh. I just uh, fired And the piece it of paper pocket. says that the journey is the, is the destination. The journey is the destination. Journey is the destination. I want to say that three times because it's kind of like uh, Dorothy in Wizard of Oz because I'm wearing my red dress instead of my red shoes. That you know, that's where the magic is. All that searching she did in the Wizard of Oz, and it turns out where she needed to be was exactly where she was. Yeah. And that's kind of your lesson. And I know that our viewers from around the world, and what's great about your turtle tribe, I remember I was in LA and I met someone, I think she was from South Africa, that was a member of Kevin's right. tribe. Yeah. And she came up and she says, are you in Kevin? Bulmer's tribe and I was completely disjointed <laughs> because I wasn't in Canada anymore. It's kind of like I wasn't in Kansas anymore. Yeah. And and I was like, yes. And she had known me because of your podcast and because of our live feeds when we do feeds and conversations within the Turtle Tribe group on Facebook. So can you tell our viewers how they can also become part of your world and find you and find how to access your resources? If you know my name, I'm easy to find. Kevin <laughs> Bulmer. No bull yeah. with Mr. Bulmer. B-U-L-M-E-R or No Schedule Man, which is the handle I used for the podcast. Um, that's pretty much my handle on every social media channel. But my, my name is my website, kevinbulmer.com. It's my email address, kevin at kevinbulmer.com. It took me like a, a lot of focus groups and a long time to arrive at those decisions. The best, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The how, simple how did better. I ever think of that? It's a lot of work, I'm not going to lie. No. Uh, the Turtle Tribe you've already mentioned, that's just, <clears throat> get ready for it, theturtletribe.com. <laughs> so, you know, trying try to learn how to make things simpler but really all of that is is on my website if people want to see the podcast or the video blogs or yes um like i had mentioned your episode of the podcast is, is 62 it's on itunes youtube where some people might be watching us live right now but isn't yes, it amazing Facebook live viewers. it's amazing isn't it trace how easy it is to connect with people no matter where they are around yeah. the world anymore it's an it's it's an incredible time that we're living in and it's a great opportunity i think for people like us to find each other yes. and celebrate each other and support each other. And uh, that's really what I'm trying to do. That's your mission. Yeah. He wants to support you too. An unstoppable you. Absolutely. Yeah, I call it creating positive change. Creating positive change. I love yeah. it. People fear change, but change is life, isn't it? Yes. Change is inevitable. The limitless secret, change is inevitable. Change is life. And so we have the fantastic Kevin Bulmer, no schedule man. Check out his website. Unstoppable You is happy to say goodbye for this episode. Thank you for joining us. YouTube, thank you for joining us. Facebook, and be sure to look out for the edited version of this TV show on Roku with 38 million viewers. Take care, everyone. Get your subscription now. It's free. <laughs>